Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm taking a look at one of my own personal cameras, the Minolta Hi-Matic S2. This is a Minolta Hi-Matic S2, and it's a great little budget camera that I picked up in the past year for shooting 35 millimeter film. Now this model is from the early 1980s, and the much earlier Minolta Hi-Matic series that started in the 60s were of a much higher quality design. But in the late 70s, they launched a cheaper version of those cameras. Now initially, it does feel pretty cheap. It is entirely plastic and it doesn't seem like anything special when you first pick it up and put it in your hands. But I've actually found it to be a great little small camera that you can just kind of throw around your neck and get out there and start shooting some 35 millimeter film. The S2 has a viewfinder at the top here, a built-in flash over here that will pop up and the lens at the front here. The lens is a 38 millimeter f2.8 lens, so it's got a nice little wide field of view to it. Now, one of the things that drew me to this camera over some of the cheaper point shoot cameras that I have is the ability to select your own ISO for the film you're shooting through this little dial on the front of the lens. Now, the rest of the camera is entirely automatic. It decides the aperture and the shutter speed exposure settings for you using its own internal light meter. But by letting me manually select the ISO of my own film on here, it means that I can decide if I want to overexpose or underexpose the film a little bit based on what I want, giving me just a little bit of control over the images that I want to shoot. Now on the barrel of the lens is a little focus ring that you can turn based on how far away you are from your subject. It also lights up when you have batteries in and the flash is engaged. On the bottom, it just takes two standard AA batteries, so you don't need anything special really to shoot this camera. If you push the shutter button at the top of the camera halfway down and the camera doesn't have enough light to take the picture, then it will beep to tell you that you don't have enough light. And if you have the flash up, but you're too far away from your subject, then it will beep continuously in order to tell you that you need to be closer to your subject. So because I can set the ISO of my film on the front of the camera, it doesn't have built-in DX coding or anything special inside of the film compartment. So really all I can do is just load up the film and just close the door and go. Now I use this camera specifically for actually shooting slide film. Now slide film needs a really nice precise exposure to it. And I don't trust a lot of my other cheaper point and shoot cameras in order to automatically detect the ISO of the film and determine a really good exposure when I'm shooting it. But I do like to have a second option for shooting slide film if I don't want to use a fully manual SLR. Especially if I'm inside and it's nice to have something with just a pop-up flash and to be able to do slides in a variety of situations. And because I can choose the ISO of the film specifically on the camera, then that means that I can actually dial in my ISO and maybe overexpose my slide film by just a little bit in order to ensure a better exposure on a camera like this where I don't have a lot of overall control on the rest of the exposure functions. This is a roll of Fuji Velvia 100 slide film that I shot with this Hymatic camera. These inside images actually came out looking really good considering that I didn't have any manual control over exposure besides just setting the ISO on the dial. For slide film you really have to kind of nail the exposure in order for it to come out looking pretty good and I found that the Hymatic actually does a lot of that itself pretty well for slide film where I think a lot of my other automatic cameras would fail to do so. The flash is never too overwhelming and it actually looks really good good considering how narrow of an exposure range it all has. Now we do see some pretty quick fall off here on shots like this where it goes from the lights to the complete shadows really really quickly. But that is kind of a characteristic of slide film and that's really to be expected where you typically just don't have a lot of detail in the shadows. And looking at this outdoor shot the meter also just does a really great job of giving me the perfect exposure for the subject in the front here. Even the hair is really well exposed in the brightest sections around this area. We even still have have some detail in the shadows in the trees back here before it kind of drops off to be completely black. The Hymatic has definitely become my kind of go-to little compact option for shooting slide film because I love to shoot slide film and it really surprised me when I went to pick it up because initially again it 
just doesn't seem like anything super special, but when I put it to the test, I came out really happy with the results. Even on a recent roll of Ektachrome, I kind of decided to see what I could get away with by using it in a park at night. In order to kind of see what would happen when I was shooting with slide film that has very little range again, and to shoot when there's very little light for the camera's light meter to register. But this shot really surprised me because of how well exposed it came out, simply by just having it set up on a park bench and then having it auto expose the image itself. Now I picked up the Minota Hymatic S2 for about $12 last year in a thrift store, and I've yet to really be disappointed with it at all. So I would really recommend it and all the similar models that Minota released in this kind of cheaper line around the time of the late 70s and into the early 80s. So there's the Hymatic S, the SD, the S2, the S2D, and the Hymatic AF, which has a built-in autofocus unit on it as well. So there are a lot of great cameras out there for shooting film that don't necessarily seem like anything special when you pick them up, but maybe when you put them to the test and find the right use for them, they might just have some hidden talents that you just have to experiment with to find out. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching and checking this out, and I hope that you enjoyed and just kind of learned a little bit more about one of my own personal cameras and a little bit more about just what's out there for you guys to experiment with and shoot with for just different things. And subscribe if you haven't done so already as I continue to post new analog content like this every week about just different cameras and films and formats. And if you're at all interested in supporting the channel, there is a link to the Analog Resurgence Patreon down in the description below. You can head over there and check that out and any sort of funds or support from that is just gonna go towards making the channel better and improving what I've been focusing on and delving into a little bit more detail about some of these topics for you guys as well. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.